This is the fifth section of chapter one, algebraic expressions, and this section is all about thirds. Now let's go through the rules first. The rule for products, so if you're multiplying two things together and you're finding the square root of those, you can split that up uh, in that it's the square root of the first part of the product times the square root of the second part of the product. The next rule applies to quotients or fractions. So if you're finding the square root of a fraction, then it's the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. Example 12. We've got some thirds here, which we're going to simplify, and we will use those rules that we just mentioned. The rule for products, which we can split up, and the rule for quotients, again, which we can split up, and we'll be using these rules to simplify. So the first one is square root of 12. Now, whenever we've got a third, we're always looking to see whether we can uh, split it up into a product where one part of that product is a square number. So can we split the um, number up into four times something or nine times something or 16 times something or 25 times something, that type of thing. Now 12, yes, I can split that up into four times three. Four is a square number. Using the rule for products, I can split that up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Now the square root of 4 is just 2. That's why we chose 4, because we can square root it. And the square root of 2, well, we'll just leave that as is square root 2. So there's our first answer. 12 can be um, simplified and written as 2 square root 2, part B. So we, here we have the square root of 20 over 2. So again, we want to see, can I write 20 as a product of two numbers where one of those numbers is a square number? Yes, I can. 4 times 5. I want the number 4 because it's a square number over the square root of 2. So using the rule for products, it's the square root of 4 times by the square root of 5 over 2. The square root of 4 is just 2. So I've got square 2 root 5 over 2. Now what's going to happen here is that the 2's cancel out. I can divide the top and the bottom by 2. And I'm just left with the square root of 5 as my final solution. So we'll just highlight that. And then we'll have a look at C. And we'll do C. So C is 5 square root 6 minus 2 square root 24 plus square root 294. Now, just like before, we want to see whether we can write all of these uh, thirds here as a square root times a number or a square number times a number. Now, square root 6, no, we can't. 2 times 3, 2 and 3 are not square numbers, so we'll leave it like that. With the 24, 24 can be written as 6 times by 4 or 4 times by 6. Let's put that first. So there's my square number, 4 times by 6. Now the last one, uh, we may not necessarily know that off by heart, but actually it's a multiple of 49. And it's actually 49 times 6 to give us 294. So from there, we'll write 5 square root 6 minus, now we can split the square root of 4 and the square root of 6 up. So we'll do that. So minus, uh, we've done already, sorry, just one minus. Square root of 4, square root of 6, plus square root of 49, square root of 6. And you'll notice they've all got square root 6 in, which is handy. We'll be able to put these things together. So we've got 5 square root 6. And then minus, now that uh, square root of 4 just becomes 2. So we've got minus 2 times by 2, which is 4. So we have 4 square root 6. And then on the last one here, we have square root 49, which is 7. So we'll have 7 square root 6, so plus 7 square root 6. Now this is just like collecting like terms. How many lots of square root 6 have we got? We've got 5. Take away 4 lots of root 6, just seems with 1 lot of root 6. Plus um, 7 lots of root 6 leaves me with 8 lots of square root 6 so that will be my answer for this one 
Example 13. We want to expand and simplify these if possible. So we'll start with A, where we've got root 2. So you don't need to say square root 2, you can just say root that number. So we've got root 2, and that's going to be times by 5 minus root 3. So we'll put our arrows in. We're going to expand the brackets and see what we get. So we'll get 5 root 2. So we want to write it that way around. You don't really want to write root 2 and then times by 5 because there could be a bit of confusion in that. Well, is that square root meant to be over the whole thing? It can confuse things. So always put the number before the third, just as you would with like algebra. You'd put the number before the letter. So we'll do it in the same type of way. And then we're going to subtract um, square root or root 2 times by root 3. So minus root 2 times by root 3. I could then take the second part, which is square root 2, square root 3, and put those together. Square root of 2 times the square root of 3, that's one of the roots of thirds. So I'll have 5 root 2 minus root 6. So that's that one done. And we'll look at B. So on B, we've got some double brackets. So we'll expand those double brackets. B, so we've got 2 minus root 3, and that's going to be times by 5 plus root 3. Don't like the look of my root sign, let's make that look a bit nicer if possible. Here we go, expand the brackets, expand the double brackets as we would normally. And if I do that, I'll have uh, 2 times by 5, 10. 2 times by a root 3, so plus 2 root 3. And then minus root 3 times by 5, or minus 5 root 3, five, five, 5 lots of root 3. And then I've got minus root 3 times by plus root 3 is actually minus 3. When you times a root by itself, you get the number. Right, so let's see if we can simplify this. Well, I've got a 10, and the minus 3, they're just numbers. They can go together, so 10 minus 3 just leaves me with 7, which I'll put down, 7. And then I've got here 2 lots of root 3, take away 5 lots of root 3, will leave me with negative 3 lots of root 3. And we'd leave our answer in that form. So 7 minus 3 root 3. So you should now be able to do exercise 1E on page 13 of the textbook.